Today, we'll be putting together a unique, colorful album cover in Adobe Photoshop. We will then finish everything off using Playset, the best way to add quick and professional typography to any image, cover, poster, or otherwise. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus. Let's jump right into it. For CD cover designs, your dimensions are going to be at least 1600 by 1600 pixels with a DPI of 300. These dimensions will not only ensure your CD cover prints at the correct size, but also guarantees a crisp, clear image quality. So let's create a new document and go ahead and drop your subject onto the middle of the canvas. We're going to use the patch tool to remove the metal spikes going up the model spine here. However, the skin does not have to be perfect as we will be adding a very complex, interesting texture over her skin, covering up most of these imperfections. Let's take a look at my favorite way to mask hair in situations where you won't be changing out the background. Uh, first, using the magnetic lasso tool, make a rough selection around the subject's hair. Again, no need to be perfect. Next, duplicate the subject, adding a layer mask to the duplicate. Now, double click the hair's layer mask to open up the mask's properties panel. Click on select and mask. As we are working on the image's original background, I suggest changing the view mode to overlay. Also, make sure the refine edge brush is selected, found here on the left hand side. Our settings will be a radius of three pixels, with Smart Radius checked. And then our Global Refinements, which are optional, uh, but try out a contrast of 26%, and finally a shift edge of negative two. Next, drag the Refine Edge Brush across the edges of the hair. Hold Alt to subtract from the selection and Control Z to undo it, if you need to. And then press OK. Now let's enlarge the hair significantly. Once happy with the size, align the larger piece of hair over the original hair, the best you can. Finally, access warp mode by choosing the move tool, clicking on one of the transform controls, and then switching from transform mode to warp mode. Once in warp mode, go ahead and warp the hair into its final shape. Something like you see here. Now let's add some serious color. Download and place Texture 01 from the Multicolored Striped Wave Backgrounds Texture Pack, uh, setting the texture to overlay. All of this can be found on envatoelements.com. Shrink and move the texture around until you find the sweet spot, uh, where the texture flows with the contour and shape of the subject's body and face. Create a selection of the subject's body using your preferred method. But in this case, a super exact selection isn't even really needed. So I use the Magic Wand Tools Automatic Select Subject button, and it worked very well. Once you have your selection, add a layer mask to your stripe texture. Again, the mask will take the shape of the selection. Next, you are going to want to mask out any hard edges around the hairline using a soft brush. Now let's create a hue saturation adjustment layer right above all our other layers, setting the settings to a hue of negative 159 and a saturation of plus 70. Let's mask the layer so that only the hair is affected. Finally, use that same O1 texture from the body on the hair, setting the texture to a soft light. Go ahead and shrink the texture just slightly and position it wherever it flows best. Once positioned, add a layer mask and hit Control I to fill it with black. Uh, slowly mask some of the texture onto the hair, keeping things nice and blended. No harsh edges here. Next up, some final touches using gradients. First, create a new layer, setting it to screen. 
Using a very large soft round brush, paint a red gradient over the subject. This gradient should fill up most of the canvas. Once done, bring down the gradient's layer opacity to around 12%. Next, create a new layer above the red gradient layer, setting it to soft light, bringing down its opacity to 25%. Now using a soft round brush, paint slightly harsh black around the edges of the canvas. The edges should be very smooth, but noticeable, almost as if you are creating the illusion of a spotlight onto the subject. Finally, repeat that step, only this time painting a very soft, seamless gradient, or vignette. You can always use Filter Blur Gaussian Blur to get a perfect no-edge vignette. Finally, onto the color grade. First, a color lookup adjustment layer, its opacity at around 49%. Now, a second color lookup adjustment layer, set to film stock with an opacity of 43%. Next, a third color lookup adjustment layer, set to horror blue with, again, an opacity of 50%. And now, a selective color adjustment layer with our reds set to a cyan of 27, a magenta of 15, a yellow of 11, and a black of plus 16. Next are yellows with a negative 47, a magenta of negative 21, a yellow of plus 53, and again a black of plus 13. And finally are cyans with a plus 25, a magenta of plus 72, a negative 40 yellow, and a black of plus 25. We are going to finish up with a brightness and contrast adjustment layer, set to a brightness of 42, a contrast of negative 12, and an opacity of around 60%. Now let's add a layer mask to this last adjustment layer and mask out the edges, creating again more of that spotlight effect onto our subject and that will be our color grade. And with our image done, all that's left to do is to add some type. Hop on over to Playset and search the library for the Electro Beats album cover design template. Now let's import our image into this template by going to Background, Custom Image. Placeit will then ask you to crop the image, if needed. Of course, ours is the perfect size, so just hit crop without changing a thing. On the left-hand side of the page, you will see the text panel. That is where you will change the text to your own. Select the text you want to change and type in your custom text. I will be naming my mock CD cover, Living Sound, Instrumental. You can select your font of choice from the drop-down menu below each text box. I'll be using the Montserrat font face. Next, let's enlarge the text just slightly, um, and just as we would in Photoshop, by clicking and dragging the transform controls found around the selected text. You can then change the text color by clicking the white colored button located next to the font menu here. I'm going to change volume 7 to a yellow-orange color to help tie the colors in uh, the subject to the typography. Finally, download your image by clicking download near the top of the page, and you're all done. And there you have it, a beginner's guide to CD covers, and all the effects learned today could just as easily be applied to portrait photos or used to create some surreal fine art, as well as book covers, posters, you name it. And if you're in a real creative slump, checking out sites like Placeit and using their templates is a top-notch way to get the creative juices really flowing, or it's just a really great way to save yourself some time. If you're looking to learn even more about all things design, why not check out some of the other excellent videos that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. If you like this video and would like to see more, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and tutorials.